Hello, everyone. Hi, hi. Well, thank you so much for coming to the launch of our first and brand new book, The Think Academy's Guide to the Microbit Galaxy. We are so excited for you to be here. We can't wait to show you the book. Now, we can't really see who is here with us on YouTube, uh, but if you are free, if you are here, uh, feel free to say hi in the live chat, which is on the right-hand side of the screen, All right? From the RSVP signups, we do recognize a few familiar names. So if you are here, hello. And there were also a few new names that we haven't had the pleasure of connecting with before. Uh, but whether you're an old friend or a new one, please welcome, aloha, selamat datang, Wan Ying, vanakam. So we appreciate that you're spending your afternoon with us. We have a lot to share with you in this half an hour. We also have a few giveaways. So stick around till the end because you won't want to miss out on everything that we have to offer. My name is Akmal. I'm at the top, uh, covered by the, the live ticker symbol. Uh, but that's, that's me there. So for today's program, we are going to start first with introducing the team and discussing the who, what, where, why of the book. Uh, next, we'll preview some content from the book, and then an entertainment break, uh, we'll play a quiz with prizes for the winners. Lastly, we're going to have the Q&A segment. We would love to hear, uh, to answer any questions you may have about the book, or about us, or about what we do, or just to connect with us. And you can wait, you, you, you can start answering your questions from right now in the live chat. You don't have to wait until the Q&A segment itself. So we're really looking forward to meeting you for the Q&A segment. But if everyone is here and ready, let's get started with the book. About us. Here is a Zoom screenshot of the team towards the tail end of discussing the book. So this happened during the lockdown period. And the lockdown period and this COVID time is a tough time, not just for us, but we know for many, many businesses out there. But this period forced us to focus on what we could achieve while we are sheltering in place. And as it so happened, it meant we were able to focus on finishing the book. There are the team members in this Zoom shot. From the top left, there's Hattie. And you can also see Hattie on the side. There's Stephen. Stephen looks like a doctor now because he's wearing that. Uh, Ying Chie, Tracy, myself, Eric, Mike. That's Faisal there, he's our intern. And Jisoo. So everyone here contributed to the writing and the testing of the projects in the book. And we also went through the seemingly never ending editing process, you know, which took ages. We had a final version, and then a final, final version, and then a final, final V2 version, and then a final, 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 final V3, final, final, please don't edit this anymore, final version. We are all very grateful, and we want to acknowledge the many interns who work behind the scenes to make this book happen. Uh, they were helping us to proofread, to test the projects, to take the photos. You see Faisal, who was in that Zoom chat that we had uh, during the editing process. He, he's one of our interns, but he is, just, he is just one of the many other sinless folks who help out with the book. I'm not sure if Amelia is uh, here with us right now uh, online. Uh, it's very early where she is right now. Amelia is an undergrad at CMU. And she interned with us over the summer remotely. She didn't come over. But uh, she created the explanatory microbit videos that you saw at the beginning. And she also worked hard on this book launch. So Amelia, if you're here, thank you so much for all your effort and for joining us. And thank you also to all our other interns who helped out. I should introduce what we do as a company. We are Think Academy. And we are in the business of thinking of coding, of making, and of STEM education. We bring education programs to school, especially tech education and physical computing. And we've been doing this for nearly a decade, about seven years. Now, that is longer than the microbit has been around. 
we actually started with the Arduino microcontroller, bringing it into schools. And we were fortunate to be a part of the digital maker program that IMDA initiated a few years ago. So after being a teaching and coding company, why did we decide to write a book? To answer that, I'll let Stephen take over. Hi, I, I'm, hey, that, that's me in the picture. Uh, so I'm measuring the screen, the books on the screen, I'm measuring with a ruler. I didn't trust the PDF scaling, but it, it turns out actual size in uh, Apple Preview really does mean app, actual size. So why did we write this book? Like Atma said, it's, it, we, we actually kind of have COVID to thank. We got bored, stuck at home, and wanted to experience the pain of typesetting a book in LaTeX. Nah, actually, in reality, we started this book much earlier. Um, at the end of 2018, December 2018, in fact. But it's true that much of the writing and rewriting only really happened in the last few months. We've been teaching and dabbling at the microbit for many years now, and coming from the Arduino, we were a little bit skeptical at first. We weren't sure hobbyists really needed a new platform, but as the ecosystem grew and as we interacted with more teachers and with more students, we found that the microbit really does make tinkering of electronics much easier. While teaching coding is one of the goals of the microbit, there's a whole bunch of people out there who are interested in making cool stuff with the electronics, but they're not really interested in, or maybe even a little bit afraid of learning to code. The microbit makes the coding much less intimidating, but people still don't know where to start. There are tons of resources available online, and, and maybe that's part of the problem. So we wrote this book to address that. It's a directed guide, a course almost, for getting up to speed with the microbit. Especially if what you really want to do is make cool stuff, but you don't really want to get bogged down with learning how to code first. So almost every chapter has projects for you to build, even the early chapters. And as you work through the projects, even if learning to code wasn't one of your goals at first, you'll find yourself having picked up enough coding confidence and making confidence to implement any microbit project you'll find online. And maybe you'll even contribute projects of your own back to the community. Our company's vision is that everyone should be empowered to enjoy creating with technology. And to that end, we hope that this book will let more people discover the joy of coding, even if that's not what they originally set out to do. Right. And who is this book for? Inge? Why, who, why did we, well, who did we write the book for? So I'd like to add to Stephen's point about why we wrote this book. I mean, I think over the years we've had the uh, we've had the very good fortune to be uh, working with a lot of teachers to introduce the microbit. Um, we get a lot of questions like, can I connect the microbit to a SD card reader? Can I connect the microbit to you know this particular component I found on the shelf? Can I connect to my microbit to the my my cat? You can't connect microbit to a cat. Uh, how can we measure things like sound? How do we measure things like temperature? How do we measure you know the meaning of life with the microbit? So, I mean, not not everything can be done, and we kind of wanted to be able to have a all in one resource for our teachers. So we started off writing this for teachers, uh, for teachers who want to teach coding and making, but don't have the time to investigate the ins and outs of a programmable microcontroller, right? So I mean, we we some of us are former teachers like Tracy, Amol, and I. Uh, as a teacher, you know, you want to, there's, there are certain things you want to, to get across to the students, but you don't have the time to go and figure out what is this component? Like, why is it that this thing's a five volt component that it doesn't work with a micro and things like that. So that's uh, one of our main audiences. So this journey begin, began way back when IMDA invited us to pilot the digital maker program. I think it was uh, end of 2016 and they give out uh, tens of thousands of micro bits. I think I have the actual figure somewhere 60,800 to schools and the community. And so beginning with a small pilot of five schools in December, 2016, we taught a small group of teachers and you know moved on to teaching over 800 teachers from I think 200 schools. I, I have these figures somewhere, right? So many thanks to all the teachers. We really dedicate this book to you. Uh, so other than teachers though, we also wrote this book for anyone who not only wants to learn and create from the micro bit, but also to extend it. Right. There are tons and tons of fantastic resources out there that introduce the microbit itself and how to code it, but there isn't nearly as much information out there on using it with external components. So all your, you know, all the external components that you have, and it's a bit of a pity because there's so much you can do with the microbit, right? So we hope that this, uh, this book will help introduce the galaxy around the microbit to everyone who wants to learn 
to think to create, uh, including maybe this guy who's uh, a little bit grouchy about you know not being part of the live stream. Okay. So <laughs> Hello. Hello. What's his name? Is he my did you name him Michael Bit? No? Maybe next time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we are also um, we are also happy to have Wallace join us today. Wallace is from the Microbit Educational Foundation. He oversees the foundation's work in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, before COVID, he was traveling frequently to Singapore and to the countries around us, advocating for the Microbit. We've met up a couple of times. We've shared a few meals together. I still remember the meal we shared in Jakarta. I think it, we ordered enough for five people, and there was only the two of us. Um, and we've shared meals, especially when he's in Singapore. But because of COVID, uh, we haven't had a chance to catch up in a while. Hi, Waris, are you there? I'm here, yes. Hi, Waris, how are things going? Can you hear me? With you? Yep, we can hear you. How are things going with you? Um, not too bad at all. Um, it's all good. Um, so, um, well, thank you for inviting me to this book launch. Um, mm -hmm. You guys are always very humble. Uh, you know, uh, sharing meal is not the only thing. I think you shared a lot of experiences with me. And, you know, um, all years of the experiences that you have been uh, using Microbit, the whole team are being condensed in this book. So check it out, guys. Um, so, you know, like I'm, what I must say, I used to travel to Singapore, countries around Asia quite a lot. In fact, I used to visit about three to four countries in a month. But now... I can visit five to seven in a day via Zoom, <laughs> Teams, or, you know, uh, Meet. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, always excited to see your works. Um, you know, Singapore is where it all got started back in 2016, 2017, when IMDA started the Digital Maker Program, uh, which was a huge success. Since then, you know, there have been many more initiatives around the world. Um, and during these times, uh, probably, you know, um, you're sharing it to the other galaxies as well. And hopefully that will benefit mm -hmm. more students and teachers um, who teach across subjects and, um, you know, um, helping us to reach our goal to reach 100 million kids by 2025. Um, in fact, you know, uh, I was just sharing the final coding with uh, Microbit with education communities in India late last night, and it was just brilliant. Uh, the program has microbit element that would be made available to over 7,000 schools in India. Um, so again, mm -hmm. you know, during this time, we, we don't stop. We keep moving like you guys. I mean, I mean when, you, when you say that you're just um, having the time to write a book, I don't think it's that easy. I mean, I've seen the book myself. Um, there's a lot of things in there that uh, anybody, any teachers or even students can uh, benefit from. Um, for us uh, at the foundation, we develop a lot of nice contents, very, very comprehensive contents that is available on www.microbit.org slash lessons. And we have also been sharing Microbit Classroom, uh, a platform, um, a, a feature with sharing function that allow teachers to set up classes, uh, see students' works mm -hmm. and monitor their progresses. And, you know, these students are also suitable for home learning. And in fact, you know, any of the projects that you have from your book, um, it's a good try, uh, put it into the contents and then you can share it with more um, students. Fantastic. Um, in, and, and in Asia, uh, we are also seeing a lot of new competition run by our partners like yourself uh, uh -huh. with the, um, the Microbit Asia Challenge. The and 2D the competition? Time, that's correct, yes, yeah. yeah. And then I heard that there were about a thousand students participated. That's right, I think, and, yeah, we had about a thousand entries for this Microbit competition. Oh, that's good. And, you know, um, I, I like the theme, which is about uh, microbit prototyping around the digital making for uh, safe reopening or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. Oh, that, that's yeah. perfect. So, you know, um, with this book, I'm sure that teachers, students will be able to uh, learn from the experiences that you have uh, and share with, with their students or, you know, anybody who, who are just interested in digital making with microbit. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Waris. Thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. My pleasure. Um, My pleasure, as always. Right. So let's get to the meat of the matter, why we are gathered here, and that is for the Microbit book. Here's a very brief look through the book.
Fantastic. All right, that's it. Uh, that's all we have for you. Thank you for coming. Oh, sorry. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. I'm really bad at, at making jokes. That was a really lame one. Uh, don't go over. Don't go away yet. Uh, we have more stuff coming up. Let's have a closer look at a few of my favorite chapters. So, chapter eight. Um, Hattie is our software engineer and maker in the house, right? And Hattie did a short review for us on chapter eight. Uh, Hattie, would you like to tell us a little bit more about chapter eight? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Akmal. So chapter eight is all about adding lights to your project to make it more visually impactful, fun, and engaging. And throughout this book, we use RGB LED strips. So you literally have endless number of ways to play around with the mm. colors and patterns. And to create these light sequences, you'll most likely need loops and lists. And that is why we name our chapter lights, loops, lists. So yeah, um, that's pretty much the... Right, let's take a look at some of the projects in the chapter. Hi, welcome to the Tinkerer's Guide to the Microbit Galaxy Chapter Review. What we have here today is Chapter 8 of the book, and this chapter is called Lights, Loops, Lists. Chapter 8 is a slightly advanced chapter, as it is expected that you already know the basics of Microbit, make code, and how to plug in external components, as well as programming concepts like variables. If you are a total beginner, not to worry at all, this chapter, or in fact the whole book, will guide you step by step. As you can see from the title, this chapter has three overarching concepts. The first one is lights for function and aesthetic. Next is loops to repeat certain sequences. And lastly, lists to store an ordered sequence. Also, there are four projects in total ranging from using lights for functional feature like this snap the dot game, or using lights for aesthetic purposes like this bling bling bracelet, or better yet, using lights for both its function and aesthetic just like this night light. Speaking of night light, here's a short demo of how I built the project following the instructions from the book. Mastering how to code for a simple LED strip and knowing the concepts of loops and lists are the foundation blocks to program other types of LED displays such as the LED matrix and ring. We have done many projects with just these three concepts and I'm sure you can do the same too. Fantastic! So that is chapter 8. Uh, if you like lights not fires if you like lights then you should definitely check out chapter eight now chapter nine the next chapter is titled moving things and now that reminds me of the terry pratchett's book moving pictures speaking of terry we have tracy our senior curriculum specialist with us tracy what can you tell us about chapter nine Uh, yeah, well, um, when doing this uh, chapter nine, uh, we wanted to focus on um, uh, motos, right? And actually, there's a lot of like different shapes and sizes of motos. But uh, I think when you go through this chapter, you realize that uh, there's like, you know, three basics of motos that you need to understand. And uh, some of it deals with uh, the fact that the some motos need a bit more power and others need a bit more control so that they can actually move to precise uh, uh, movements. Uh, so it really, we hope that this chapter really just um, uh, condenses and and just makes it clear that uh, uh, you know what uh, what to look out for uh, to understand uh, all your choices with motos. And I think uh, when we go through the, the right. video, let's uh, take you'll a look through why. one of the projects in the chapter. There's good reason why chapter 9 is one of our longest chapters, as we want to break down the myriad of options we have incorporating motos to move things in our microbit projects. So that's how we decided to explore the DC moto, continuous servo moto, and the stepper moto to understand the different suitability for different types of projects. You'll find that a major consideration to take note of is providing enough power to the moto, to which is why we show you how to use the Motobit breakout board for the DC moto or the ULN2003 driver board for the stepper moto, which ensures enough power gets supplied. 
Since these two model types require more components and a few more connections, let's see how to use the more convenient continuous servo model as featured in our spinning Zotro project. Fantastic. So if you want to make moving pictures by moving things, you should check out chapter 9. So that was a brief preview of both chapter 8 and chapter 9. Thank you, Hattie and Tracy. On to the rest of the book. Mike, would you like to bring us to? Thanks, Akmal. I uh, love the videos, by the way. Uh, they were absolutely great to showcase some of the, the projects uh, in uh, in the book. Uh, and, and I want to reiterate, as Stephen mentioned, uh, every chapter has multiple hands-on projects. So you really get to test your skills uh, and create some really neat uh, projects along the way. Uh, so back to the book. Uh, after our introduction, uh, chapters two through four uh, start with the basics. Uh, we really uh, make sure that even beginners uh, can pick up the book and get started right away. Uh, we introduce the micro bit. We discuss some uh, simple programming concepts, uh, such as how to create variables, uh, what a function is, and then also talk about uh, the different buttons, the different sensors included on the micro bit. Uh, then we get into uh, more complex, slightly more complex chapters. Chapters five through uh, seven start connecting all sorts of different components. Uh, to the micro bit, uh, things like buzzers, LEDs, sensors, and so on. Uh, and you'll create projects such as a burglar alarm or a car park gantry. Uh, then chapters eight and nine, uh, as you saw already, build on this. Uh, and uh, this is where uh, we add lots of different lights, lots of different movement to projects. Uh, and this uses components such as the LED strip and the servo motor, and, and these are really fun. Uh, Hetty and Tracy uh, really outline some, some unique things that you can do with it. Uh, just the LED strip alone can really add uh, a lot to your projects and make them look great. Uh, in chapters 10 and 11, we start talking about some of the more advanced ways to use the micro bit. Uh, for data collection, for example, connecting a bunch of sensors to the micro bit and then logging that data uh, on the internet somewhere. Uh, if anyone's familiar with the Internet of Things, uh, this is a great introduction to, uh, to the Internet of Things. Uh, and it also talks a bit about how uh, to use the micro bit to interact with electronic toys uh, or appliances. Uh, as you can see here, I think Stephen has connected the micro bit to uh, an R2D2 toy. Uh, and then at the very end, we wrap up with a quick review and a look into the future, uh, discussing some other coding and hardware platforms that you can also use with the micro bit. Uh, so really, we, we run the, the whole gamut uh, from introduction to some more advanced topics with the micro bit. Right. Thanks, Mike. So that's what uh, we, we cover in the book. Uh, really, the, the title of the book is really apt. We try to cover everything under the galaxy and try to fit it within this about, I think, 240 pages or so. But there are only a finite number of pages in the book, and it can only cover so much content. So what would you do if you have finished all the projects in the book and you're hungry for even more projects? Well, we have a website where we collect microbit and maker projects. Hattie curates the contents of this website. 
So Hattie, can you tell us more about this site? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, like Akmal has mentioned, Let's Get Hacking is our tutorial site where we post making projects every now and then. Um, and the bigger purpose of the site is to be the go-to inspiration site, especially for times when you have all these components, you bought all these components, you have tried the demo projects, and you ask yourself, what's next? And this is where Let's Get Hacking comes in um, to give you um, ideas, inspiration and stuff. So yeah, uh, anyway, the site is up and it's free of charge. Okay, uh, so do check them out uh, after this live. Uh, the link is on the screen and we'll put it in the description. I'll see you. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it in the we'll yeah. put the link in the description of this video uh, afterwards too. So you can you can review this video, our launch video on our YouTube channel. All right, thanks, Hattie. Now our last segment will be the Q and A, and we are looking forward to answer your questions. But first, let's have a quiz with prizes. The top three winners will get store vouchers for use on our online storefront at gethacking.com. We ship to most places in the world. So if you are in Antarctica, your, your shipping is going to be pretty expensive. We are giving out vouchers ranging from $20 to $40 today. With these vouchers, you can shop on our site. Um, you can get the book, you can get the micro bit, and you can get the galaxy of electronic components that work with the micro bit. So we encourage everyone to get involved in this quiz. The more the more people we have, the merrier it will be. Uh, we're going to be using Kahoot. Uh, we use that in the classroom a lot, and students love uh, Kahoot as a platform. So do join us. There's no one better to run the quiz than Jisoo, uh, as she has been our game mistress for our weekly company games during this work from home period. Jisoo, over to you. Thanks, Akmal. Uh, we'll be holding our quiz on Kahoot. So you can join us on kahoot.it. And when you set your nickname, please use the first part of your email address. You use the RSVP form so that we know how to get in touch with you if you win in our quiz. So on your mobile device or another browser, you can join us on kahoot.it with the game pin uh, that's on the screen right now. It's 984154. So we'll just be waiting for people to join us right now. So there's going to be a bit of a delay uh, because of the YouTube live stream. Mm -hmm. uh, so it might get a little bit confusing uh there will be about a three to four second delay before you actually see the options or oh, your options will appear first and then you will see the uh uh the question after that all right looks like people are joining yep see 11 people yeah. 12. Yeah, let's give 13. it uh let's give it another minute for people to to find their way to kahoot Right, I think that's about it. I think that's uh, no one else seems to be joining in. Uh, if you're still trying to find your way, remember the game mm -hmm. code 984154. Go to kahoot.it. Okay, more people are joining in. Okay, I think it's the delay that's causing a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Jisoo, shall we start? Uh, I think it's that. Okay, oh. all right. Let's, let's, yeah, we still have a few few people joining in. Uh, you can still join in. You might miss the first question, but you can still join in by going to 984154, right? Let's get started. 
All right. So the first question would be, who designed the micro bit? And we have the option, uh. Doctor Who, BBC, MediaCorp, and Microsoft. So we have 13 answers in right now. 14, 15. And the answer is BBC. Right, and 14 of you got that right. Next question. So we have Chen Zixian as our first. Mm -hmm. And we have a placeholder as second. <laughs> so the next question would be, how many buttons are on the micro bit? And our options are 3, 10, 25, and 36. And the answer was three with nine. Right, this is getting it correct. Yeah, this was a kind of a trick question. There are only two buttons, uh, user programmable buttons at the front, but uh, you know, there is a reset button at the back that we counted. And we All still right. have in at the top. Then the third question is how many LEDs are on the front face of the micro bit? And our options are 3, 10, 25, and 36. And the answer is 25, and we have 11 people getting it correct. Right. So I, I'm slowing down a little bit because there is a, a bit of a lag between the YouTube live stream uh, and the game itself. There's about a six second lag. So if you see that number, that countdown timer on the left hand side going below uh, six, you know, you're in trouble. You better choose an answer quickly. All right, let's move on to the next question. As the highest climber. So the fourth question is, what does the LED stand for? And our options are lighting every day, light emitting diode, less, less efficient drive, and lucky ecstatic duck. Hmm. I think lucky ecstatic duck sounds familiar. <laughs> and oh, the correct oh. answer is light emit emitting diode with 19 people getting it wrong. No, they got it right. No, I getting it right. I'm sorry. And we still have Chen Zixian at the top. And the fifth question coming up now is, which of the following is a sensor on the micro bit? And our options are potential meter, buzzer, <coughs> accelerometer, and a servo. And the correct answer is accelerometer, with 12 people getting it correct. Oh, wow, right. we still have Chen Zixian at the very top. Sixth question out of seven. The sixth question is, which of the following is not a sensor on the micro bit? And the options are temperature sensor, soil moisture sensor, magnetometer and the LED. Which of the following is not a sensor on the micro bit? And the correct answer was the soil moisture sensor with seven people getting it correct. Right, so some people choose LED is not a sensor. You're kind of right, but we definitely know there's no soil moisture sensor on the micro bit. It's a trick question, right? Because the LED on the micro bit is actually also the light sensor at the same. That's time. right. You can use the L the LED is being used as the light sensor, if you you want to go advance yeah. on that. All right. the The last question, 
Last chance to Final get on the board. Question. Final question is, who wrote the Tinkerer's Guide to the Microbit Galaxy book? Is it Tinker Academy? Tinker Cat? Tinker Academy? Or Tinker Academy? Hmm. Hmm. And the correct answer is us, Tinker Academy. With 17 people getting on incorrect. So in third place, we have placeholder who got 500, 5,573 points. In second place, we have Cheryl with 500, 5,677 points. And in first place, we have Chen Zixian who got 6,031 points. So Fantastic. congratulations to all of you. Right. Uh, so I, I, I think I did see uh, Chia Sen's name and Cheryl's name in the RSVP. But placeholder, I'm not sure who you are. Um, so if you can take a screenshot um, of your screen, uh, showing that you're in third place, uh, also second place and first place, and then you can contact us later, and we can get the vouchers to you. But I do think, I think uh, Sisian and Cheryl, your names are in the RSVP list. I've got your email addresses and I'll email you, you the vouchers. All right. So thank you so much for playing our quiz. We hope you had fun. All right. So the last segment is the Q&A. Uh, we are going to be using the live chat on the right hand of the screen. Uh, and I, I see that the live chat has been active throughout. So it looks like all of you have figured out a way to, to comment. Um, and I think there were some questions earlier on. Um, if anyone can help me pick through the questions and we can try to answer them. Uh, well, let's see. Some of the questions. Oh, let's see. What are some of the questions that we have? And you can type your question in again if you got lost in the, the thing. Uh, so that's a that's a question from a Beatrice. It says, uh, oh, oh, hey, guys, can I bring the book into the classroom as a teaching resource? Right. And uh, maybe, Eric, would you like to take this question? So sure. the question is, uh, Thanks. can I bring the book to the classroom as a teaching resource? Okay. Hey, yeah. Thank you, Amal, and thank you for the question. So as uh, mentioned earlier, we wrote the book with teachers as our primary audience, right? So you can use it as a resource for yourself as you prepare to bring microbit into your classroom. But it doesn't have explicit lesson plans in it, right? So uh anyway we are working to bring together all the components you will need to do the projects in the books in an easy to get kit because uh as you flip through the uh the book uh, you might notice uh, how can i uh, get all these different components right yeah so we have uh, uh we have something in the works for that but at the moment you might want to take a look in our tinker kit that is available in our get hacking store right it, this is uh this kit is a good start as uh as we have uh looked through it and it is sufficient for the first six to seven chapters on the book um probably minus uh minus a few smaller uh, uh smaller right. cables yeah. here and there okay. i think uh, with, yeah with, on the top tinker of that, kit, with the tinker kit you can actually yeah. do the first seven chapters projects in the first seven chapters uh, it's missing the Tinker Kit. It's missing crocodile clips. It's missing a uh, uh, copper tape. Uh, but I mean, even without those components, you can do the majority of the projects in the first seven chapters. And we are we are working to get you know to get the rest of the components that you will need to do all the projects in the in the book, uh, as you know, in an easy to get package. Uh, but we are still working on it. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Eric. Uh, there's another question here from Lena. How can we get the book? Uh, Inkche, how can we get the book? I know your answer in the chat. 
but maybe you can see it again here. Well, I think we're going to put up a link, right, uh, in one of the next few slides. So we can, you can get it from there. We're also, for our international audience, we're actually going to, uh, you know, fingers crossed with the shipping, uh, put it on Amazon. And we're going to be able to get it from various places around the world. Uh, we'll do, uh, drop us an email if you can't pick it up, and we'll, we'll try our best to get it to you. Uh, I think another question that I've gotten before is, uh, will there be an ebook? And we're working on it. Uh, it'll take a bit of time. Uh, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not something we have right now. But uh, once again, drop us off. And if you want, you can sign up for a mailing list uh, and just head over to our our website and sign up for a mailing list. We'll Fantastic. All right. So we are gonna. I I do realize that we we have gone beyond the time initial time slot that we set aside about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, so we are gonna end the, the launch event and we do wanna have the giveaway, right? Uh, we wanna thank you for joining us. Uh, and I've asked someone to, to go in and uh, go and pre-select a random person who is watching us. Ah, okay, right. It looks like we are giving the book to uh, Lim, Lim Ming Chin. Uh, so I hope we have your email address in our RSVP list. Ming Chin, thank you for joining us today and congrats on getting a copy of the book. Right? So the book is printed. We finished printing the book like literally yesterday or two days ago. Uh, the books are waiting to board a ship to reach Singapore, hopefully in the next seven to 10 days. Meanwhile, we have already put the book available for pre-order at this link, tk.sg, buy the book. And right now, while we're waiting for the book to reach us, we are having a discount, 20% discount with the pre-order code, with the discount code 20 of book. So when you do the checkout, put in the this discount code and you'll get 20% off. And this is only going to last until the rest of the books which us, which is going to be in about seven to 10 days. All right, so, you know, don't wait, buy the book now from our website. All right, and we'll put up the link also in the description after this. All right, so thank you for spending your afternoon with us. We'll, we'll stick around for uh, maybe a few more minutes to, if anyone has any other questions and you want to link up with us, uh, but, also, if you want to contact us, our contact information is available here. Our website, our email address. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Medium, LinkedIn, uh, and then GitHub and YouTube at the handle at Tinker Academy, not at Tinker Academy, right? It's at Tinker Academy. All right. So thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Have a safe weekend uh, and have a Good rest of the day to you.